and today another video for you guys but today it's a boiler repair so we've been called out to this property i've just literally got here put my uh, work jacket down because i can't be asked to get a dish sheet and whatnot and um, it's it's look it's eight o'clock in the morning so it is what it is and um, so basically on these worcester boilers whenever you get a fault on any boiler the first thing to look out for is a cold code on the front of the boiler on these worcesters you see a flash come on in so you can see the flash so can you see that flash there so it's a slow flash but it's mostly off and then on yeah mostly off and then on so what i'm going to do is um i don't know what that means yeah so every 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 boiler has different error codes e113 or worcesters have these flashes and stuff like that so the best thing to do is download the manual so find the manual online google it and then download the manual yeah as you can see here i'm not sure if you can see it No, you can't. You can't see it in the in the thing. I've done. I've downloaded the manual, so I've searched the uh, Green Star RI installation manual. I've pulled up the manual. When I've pulled up the manual, I would show it to you on the phone, but you ain't going to be able to see it because the thingy. Um, I've pulled up the fault finding tab on it, and the, what the fault finding tab does on these boilers, it tells you that slow flash is a fast flash. What's going on? And on here, it's a slow flash, mostly off and then mostly on. If you guys want to follow along. Quickly pause the video now, download Worcester RI um, installation and service manual and you see what I mean. Scroll down to page 59, which is in section 8.1. So page 59, 8.1. And then you can see it says slow flash, mostly off and then flashes on. It then says there it's ignition lockout. Yeah, so it's telling you then after that what to check. Check the gas valve, quick combustion levels, blocking the flue, gas valve adjustment, ignition uh, electrodes, and also after all that, replace P uh, PCB. So what I suggest now, what we do, I kind of narrowed it down to the ignition lockout, so I don't need to look at anything else. I'm just simply going to reset the boiler. I'm going to hear for what's going on. I'm going to hear if the boiler starts clicking. I'm just going to, that's the easiest thing to do, is to kind of hear what's going on. So on the boiler, to reset these you literally just go here to the reset button turn it on so now the ball has been reset let's see what happens so we're calling for heat as you can see I'm not sure if you can hear that but it sounds like they've got water in the boiler so it's already started up straight away you've got flame we've got everything so I know the spark electrodes, the gas valve, the the sequence of operation is fine, but something is happening once it's lit and up. And from just looking at it now, from experience, you can hear that sound. You can hear that there's got water in the boiler. So most likely the condense is going to be blocked. Now let's have a look outside to see if the condense is external. If it is, most likely it's frozen. If it isn't, we'll have a look. So what we'll do. outside no if you look up here you can hear that that's a classic condense blockage yeah but there's no condense pipe down here so most likely the condense is running down here behind this washing machine and then let's see if it's under here and there it is there there's the condense right there you can see it's got a little kick in it there which is not helping so they're putting a 45 on it, they've kicked it. It could be there, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo this. I'm going to get a wet vac on there to suck it all out so it's not messy. And then I'm going to clean the trap. Once I've cleaned the trap, we'll take it from there. Guys, I've um, disconnected this pipe so the condensate is now free. 
you can tell the ball is running fine now so the the blue light is solid so that was the problem now i'm going to figure out why it happened so it's either the condensed trap is blocked or basically this pipe to going down here has got a blockage in it so we're going to find out by taking the cover off taking off the trap i'm going to look at the condition of that and if that's if that's clean or whatnot well you'll see what happens There you go. Okay, so you can see we've took the trap out and there's next to nothing in there. So I don't think this was the issue. But while we're here, we'll give it a little quick rinse out. Right, so the trap, you can see it's got a bit of crap in the bottom, but it's next to nothing. So I don't think this was the issue. I think the pipe behind it was the issue. So I'm just going to push this back on. I'm going to check the pipe now. So let's have a look at this pipe. So they haven't glued it in, which is not good for the install. Well, the way they shouldn't have done it, but for us, it's really good. It's really easy. Okay, so let's take that part. Bit of glue in there. I don't think that would have done anything. Okay, what is this? So we've got a lump. I think that's glue actually, solvent weld. I think what they've done is they've tried putting the glue inside here instead of putting the glue on the pipe this could have blocked it so this could have blocked the condens so what we're going to do now is pour water down here and see what it's like and see if that sorted it so what i'm doing now guys is stop that bit. what i'm doing now guys i'm basically i've got this little foot pump thing uh, I've put about two litres of water in there and now I'm just basically draining the water through here and I'm seeing, I'm looking to see if the water comes back up. If the whole two litres goes through with no problem, I know now I've sorted out the issue, I'm not going to get called back. The last thing you guys want to do is come here, unblock the condens and then get called back a week or two later. It has happened to me once before and that's why I learned from my mistakes and now whenever I unblock the con condens, I'll always make sure the route is completely clear by um, doing these things like this and you know you won't get a call back. So I've joined the bike back together. I'm confident that the issue was that little blockage there because I've basically put down two litres of water and it's gone down nice and easy. So I don't think there's a blockage down the firework anymore. I think the boiler will work fine now. Now the job's done. So technically I've done my job. I was called here to, to check the contents to make sure that's fine. But while I'm here now, I'm just going to check the safety stuff for these boilers. So there was a technical bulletin released on these Worcesters. And on that technical bulletin, we're told to check the combustion seal, the burner, at the top of this, um, this gasket. So all you do, you get your FGA, put your FGA around the probes, around the top, and see if you get any CO readings. If you get any CO reading, any ratio readings, you then need to take this off, um, change the electrodes, and change that seal. Um, if the customer doesn't want you to do it and you haven't got enough notification, you've then basically got to put the boiler at risk because it is at risk. So you've got to classify them at risk, notification, and then leave. Or obviously you carry out the repair job done. So we finished the job, the boiler's now working, and we've sorted it out. Just to recap what I did, so I got here, there was an error on the boiler which kind of told me what the indication was. This this applies to every single boiler. So you go to the boiler, there's an error there on the boiler. Once you get, figure out what the error is, pull out the pull out your PDF on your phone, um, the installation manual, find out what the error code is. When you know what the error code is, then you can pinpoint where that error is coming from. If it's an older boiler, then you'll have to do sequence of operation. It's pump running, it's fan running, air pressure switch and stuff like that. So it gets a bit more technical with the older boilers. Um, I, I actually think the older ones are easier to repair, but um, the newer ones kind of tell you what the issue is. So this one was flashing, it was telling me what the issue was, downloaded the PDF. Once I downloaded the PDF, I pinpointed it was an ignition lockout. Then I switched it on just to listen out what was going on. It was very easy. To be fair, it's quite a simple repair. It's a very easy repair. But this repair, this same repair can be carried on to any, any condensing boiler. So if you hear that sound on any condensing boiler, you know the issue is the block condenser or something like that along the lines. Um, so I've did all that. Once that's done, I've cleared the condense, checked it out, and the job's done. So that's the sequence operation. 
If you need any more help, let me know in the comment section below. I'll get more videos like this uploading hopefully soon. Job done.